Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome to the Midlife Revolution. I'm your host, Megan Connor. And today I want to give a little bit of an update about what's been going on with my cousin, Lori Ballow Daybell's case. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Please hit the like and subscribe if you are able to. I appreciate the support. For those of you who don't know, I am Lori Vallow Daybell's first cousin. She and I grew up together. She was a bridesmaid at my wedding. We lived together in an apartment in Austin with my other cousin, Adam, for a few months. And her son, Colby, is just a little bit younger than my oldest daughter. And we spent a lot of time as young moms together. We lost touch during the divorce proceedings that went on between her and Joe Ryan. And other than seeing little updates from other family members about what was going on in her life on social media and seeing pictures of Tylee and JJ on social media, Lori and I didn't really talk after the early 2000s. But I obviously have kept up with her case. It has, it has deeply impacted my life because of my proximity to these family members. And I have felt the need to speak out publicly because a lot of the media coverage during her first trial in Idaho. When the trial first started, a lot of the coverage talked about what a great mom she used to be until she met Chad, and then all of a sudden she snapped. And that was not my experience with her because I did see some of her toxic traits in our time growing up together. But because I hadn't been through my own therapy and healing at the time, I didn't really realize what her behaviors and actions meant at the time. So I began speaking up about those things and I did a few interviews. The first interview I ever did was with Justin Lemon Fox 10 Phoenix and he is an investigative journalist who's covered this case since the very beginning. If you've been following the case, you know exactly who, who he is. Next, I did an interview with Hidden True Crime with Lauren Mathias, which was a very deep dive into my growing up years with the Cox family. And then I appeared on Mormon Stories, where I told my Mormon story along with the story of my family. I also appeared on Core TV and a few other podcasts at the time, but it wasn't until April of this year, a year after Lori's trial, that I launched my own podcast where I mainly talk about healing from trauma and how to have healthier relationships, especially your relationship with yourself. The reason I keep talking about Lori and her case is because I use the examples of her actions and behaviors to help people understand how to identify people with manipulative and controlling behaviors, how to distance yourself from those people in your life in healthy ways, and how to heal from trauma so that your behaviors don't end up hurting other people as well. So now for an update on what's been going on with Lori over the course of the last few weeks. There have been lots of status conferences and Rule 11 hearings, and so I just want to go over what's been going on. For those of you who may have just sort of heard these things on the periphery, there's a lot that's happening in true crime, and Colby Ryan, Colby Ryan, who is Lori's oldest son, her only living child, he has started a podcast called the Scar Wars podcast, which I highly recommend you checking out. I love Colby's work. And he's been posting a lot recently. They just had a brand new baby. And he's been posting some things about his interview with his mom and his interviews with Hidden True Crime. And so there's been a lot of activity on his channel. And he does also talk about some of the things that have been going on recently with Lori's trial. But because of the other things that have been going on in the true crime world, I don't know that a lot of people are necessarily as caught up on what's going on with Lori as we have been in the past, as, as her case has been the most prominent one, and it's not anymore. First of all, I want to mention that the public defenders that were representing Lori back in the beginning of October filed a motion to have a competency hearing. Her then attorneys were concerned that she wouldn't be competent to stand trial. Now, in the state of Arizona, and actually in most states, there's a clear definition about what competency means. But specifically from the Arizona law, a defendant is competent to stand trial if they have the mental capacity to understand the proceedings against them, the charges against them, and assist in their defense. This includes being able to understand their surroundings, receive and interpret information, make decisions based on that information, communicate with their defense attorney, and understand the nature and severity of the charges 
brought against them. If there's a reason to believe that a defendant is not mentally competent, the court will conduct a competency evaluation. This evaluation is called a Rule 11 hearing. Any party to the case can file a motion to request a competency hearing. If the judge determines that the defendant is incompetent, they may be detained in a mental hospital and the defendant can't be tried, convicted, or sentenced while they are incompetent. So a lot of you may remember that in Lori's first trial, she was deemed incompetent to stand trial for a time. She was hospitalized, and then her mental health was reinstated. She was reevaluated, and that's what allowed her to be able to stand trial. Now, in this case, her original public defenders in Arizona were the ones who filed that motion for a Rule 11 competency hearing, presumably because Lori wasn't communicating well with them or because she wasn't participating in her own defense. On October 21st, Judge Boreski granted the motion to have a Rule 11 hearing established for Lori. After that ruling, those public defenders were removed from the case or they withdrew from the case due to a conflict of interest. Now, this happens all the time. It doesn't mean anything nefarious. But if one attorney in the public defender's office is deemed to have a conflict of interest, then all of the attorneys in the public defender's office are deemed to have a conflict. And so they have to work with an outside contractor to find attorneys for the indigent in the state of Arizona. So that's what happened sometime after the 21st. I don't know the exact date. Lori had new attorneys appointed to her. Now, in the meantime, the first mental competency report from Dr. McGrady was submitted and issued. So that means we do have a report from one mental health professional that's already evaluated Lori. Then on October 24th, Lori's new attorneys submitted a motion stating that Lori wanted to represent herself or go pro se, meaning that she wants to stand trial without the help of attorneys. She wants to represent herself. She wants to com she wants to present her own case. Presumably, she wants to testify on her behalf or at least examine witnesses on her own behalf, which I have a lot of thoughts about that, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Then on October 29th, Lori's new attorneys submitted a motion to withdraw the Rule 11 to have her competency evaluated. This is presumably maybe because Dr. McGrady's report said that Lori was competent and maybe they were satisfied with those findings and decided that they wanna withdraw that Rule 11 motion. Well, then on November 6th, which was election day, it was also the day that I injured my foot. And so I was not available for that particular status conference. But at that conference, a lot happened. Lori's attorneys confirmed that she wants to represent herself. And Judge Bureski ruled that the Rule 11 competency hearings need to continue. Judge Bureski had since learned about Lori's competency evaluation in 2022 and that she had been deemed incompetent to stand trial at that point. And here's what Judge Bereski had to say at that actual conference. Let's represent herself. There's been a prior finding of incompetency. She's been, re she's been restored, she's been tried. I don't know, as we know with competency, uh, people are, just because they've been restored once doesn't mean they remain competent forever. I don't know if it's medication compliant. So essentially Judge Bereski has dug into this a little bit more and has said, we're going to go ahead with the Rule 11. And at that time, he decided to vacate the February trial that was on the docket for Lori. So as of this moment, there is no trial date set for Lori in February. They want to get this competency situation resolved before they put a trial on the docket. Because if she is deemed incompetent to stand trial, obviously she would have to be restored to competency before the trial could be set and go forward. In order for the Rule 11 competency evaluation to go forward, Lori has to cooperate with the mental health evaluators, which she has not done. There is a second evaluation that needs to be done by a Dr. Hernandez. And from what I understand, this is a full evaluation that needs to be done. There may be some MMPI testing that goes on. And obviously, the doctor who is evaluating Lori has to interview her. Well, Lori has not cooperated and has not interviewed with this doctor, Hernandez. 
And so obviously there's no report available right now. In addition, on the 14th, was, which was just a few days ago, Lori refused transportation to her Rule 11 hearing. And so she wasn't there in court. And the judge, who's a different judge from the status conference judge, he's the one who rules on the Rule 11 hearings. This judge, this judge basically said, I'm not going to rule on this Rule 11 when there's no defendant present. Essentially, the judge wanted to be able to have Lori there to perhaps have her speak on her behalf or to ask her some questions about whether or not she understands what she's asking for and that she is in fact competent to stand trial. The prosecution pointed out that it would be a lot easier to vacate the Rule 11 findings or to vacate that request for Rule 11 if Lori would comply with the Rule 11 requirements. So the timeline going forward now is that there's another status conference on November 20th that'll again be with Judge Bereski where I'm sure he's going to review the fact that Lori didn't show up for her status conference, that she wasn't co cooperating with the evaluator. And so I don't know exactly what will happen at that status conference. It's really just to inform the judge of what's been happening and have both of the, both the defense and the prosecution present anything that's relevant to the case, to the status of preparing for the case. Provided that Lori does cooperate with the mental health evaluation, Dr. Hernandez's report, Dr. Hernandez's report is due on December 2nd. And then on December 5th, there will be a new Rule 11 hearing. So hopefully Lori will comply with Dr. Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez will submit her report on time and the attorneys will have time to review it before the next Rule 11 hearing on December 5th. If Lori is deemed competent to stand trial, I'm sure that on the 20th of this month that Judge Bereski will set a new status conference, which will be sometime after that Rule 11 hearing, so that then the judge will be able to brought, be brought up to speed on whether or not Lori is competent to stand trial. My thoughts on Lori wanting to represent herself. I just do want to say, if you're new to the channel, welcome and thank you for being here. Please subscribe. I do comment on all things Lori Vallow Daybell, but also my podcast is really about healing and moving forward in life. If you're one of those people that is interested in having healthier relationships and especially a healthier relationship with yourself, I think you'll enjoy the content on the podcast. I release a new episode every Wednesday, followed by a live Q&A afterwards. I also do a live on Sunday afternoons where we always have a topic of intention setting for the week or something positive and inspirational. I'm also starting to interview more guests on my channel about all things, questioning everything, and really taking a look at our lives to see if the things we've chosen are what is serving us, to reevaluate big things and little things, and to open our minds to new ideas and new possibilities. So I hope you'll join us for that. And if you have found this content helpful, please like it and please share it with somebody who you know needs to hear it. Now, my thoughts about Lori representing herself at trial. I think that this is a tactic of Lori just being Lori. I know that Larry has used that phrase many times, and it just fits because Lori wants what Lori wants, and she doesn't believe that anybody else is going to act in her best interests better than she can, which may be true. Based on her last trial, I know that she gave very specific instructions to her defense attorneys about what they could and couldn't talk about, the ways that they could and could not question witnesses. She didn't want her mental health questioned. She didn't want to throw Chad under the bus. And largely, her attorneys really complied with her requests. She gave a wild allocution statement, which I do an unpack of that statement on my channel as well, my feelings about that, as well as interviews on Mormon Stories podcast and Hidden True Crime podcast about my feelings about her statements and the sentencing. But you also have to remember that somebody like Lori with narcissistic personality traits, of course, she believes that she is 
the best person to represent herself. Even though she's not an attorney, she's had no formal training as an attorney or any kind of formal schooling after high school other than her cosmetology license. Her hubris and her narcissistic traits help her to believe that she is capable of representing herself in a major conspiracy to commit murder trial. Also, given what she revealed to Colby when Colby interviewed her over the phone, Lori revealed that she really believes that Tylee was responsible for JJ's death. She, of course, completely denies that there was anyone who was unalived in this case. Now, she didn't reveal much about her thoughts on Charles's death with Colby. Colby did say he wanted to ask her about that, but given Lori's response about what happened to the children, Colby was frustrated and fed up and didn't want to get into that during that initial phone call with her, which I completely understand his frustration. So as much as I think that Lori representing herself is kind of a stunt, at the same time, I think she genuinely believes that she's capable of representing herself as well. I believe that she tried to waive her right to a speedy trial. I don't remember exactly how Judge Bereski ruled on that. And if you know, maybe you can put it in the comments. There's only so much I can keep track of with this case because there's just a voluminous amount of information and so many hearings. Kresha Easton, who is Kay and Larry's daughter, does such an excellent job of keeping track of everything. And she probably has covered this on her channel. So as always, when there's stuff that I don't know, I love it when people point it out. I do try to read all of my comments and you can always email me at megan at third-verse.com or ask Megan with two E's, M-E-E-G-A-N at gmail.com. So I found it really interesting that it was Lori's attorney who originally asked for the competency hearing because they were representing Lori's best interests. But I'm sure that obviously based on Lori's behavior and her not cooperating with that, it was not what Lori wanted. Again, she doesn't want her mental health to be questioned or to be brought onto the table. I think she really does believe all of the things that she is saying that she believes based on what, based on her conversation with Colby and also based on the fact that I've had conversations with a couple of people who are communicating with Lori and they state that as long as you talk about religion and allow her to sort of preach her beliefs to you, she will continue talking to you. So to me, that says she has a little group of followers that both one, both inside prison and outside of prison, who she's sharing her religious beliefs with. I think she really does still believe she is who she said she was, somebody instrumental in gathering the 144,000, basically an exalted being, a prophetess. I don't know exactly what she is preaching at this moment, but I'm sure that it is along the same lines of everything that she's been talking about since the beginning of this case. Obviously, she doesn't believe that she's mentally ill, and so she wants to get rid of the Rule 11. Hopefully, her attorneys can convince her to comply with that so that she'll be found competent. Now, if it actually does end up going to trial and she actually does end up representing herself, it's going to be a zoo, and I'm really not looking forward to that. I much rather would have attorneys representing her and have proceedings be dignified and for Charles to have his day in court and for justice to be served for him, then to have justice served for Brandon as well. I think if Lori represents herself, it's going to just be as crazy as Lori is. And I'm worried about what will happen with the proceedings if Lori represents herself. I don't think that a jury will have trouble convicting her, even if she does represent herself. But I just worry that there will be so much focus and attention on how crazy it is and less focus and attention on justice for Charles. So those are my thoughts on Lori representing herself. I will keep up with the status conferences and the hearings that are coming up so you can look for more updates on my channel if you subscribe to the channel and hit notifications. I also do some lives and I will be live streaming from time to time when things come up with Lori, as well as trying to live stream the conferences, because I actually really love Judge Bereski. And the last hearing that I was able to see in real time, I think there's a lot that the judge says that 
deserves attention. And so I'm going to be trying to stream those from now on if I possibly can. And I'm hoping that Justin Lum will continue winning his motions to have cameras in the courtroom for this case. So thank you for tuning in. There is definitely more to come. And thanks for your support of the channel. I really appreciate it. As always, be good to each other. But most of all, be good to yourself. Take care.